Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Parvez Shahid, head of product at Virtua, and with me is Jawad Ashraf. We have questions from the Cardano community. Okay, mm-hmm. and they've sent a bunch of uh, questions uh, with regards to Cardano Island. Okay. So this is the f- first in series of Q and A's we'll do. Mm-hmm. This passionate community uh, wants to know what is happening with Cardano Island. So I'm going to throw you a bunch of cues. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, we can take it one by one. All right, all right. Cool. Yeah. So first question is, what has caused a delay of the Cardano Island land claim, and is there any new date we should look forward to? Okay, well, the first thing what I'll say about anything in crypto land, and actually every time you've got disruptive technology, it's not just cutting edge, it's bleeding edge. So you're always trying to do something which is quite new. And often in this situation, you get cut. So we had an estimate that after the, the sale, we would go and do the claim event a few weeks later. Um, and as we started working our way through it, what we designed, we actually came to see, was actually not as friendly... Um, an experience and something we know that in the long term it wouldn't actually help the owners of Cardano Island. Like for example, um, when we had the claim event, yes, you could uh, claim the land and choose the spot and we worked with Anvil on this, Mm -hmm. but we weren't including things like the actual screenshots of exactly where the plot was, for example. And so as a result, when you actually looked at it on JPEG store or anything else like that, you would just see a block of items which just were repeating the same thing over and over, which made it very hard for people to actually show exactly what they had. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, the whole interactive map took longer for us to design than we expected. Okay, okay. Even though we designed it all, the ability to see the map, see landmarks, uh, pan around, click on that, buy the plots you know, one at a time or in batch, there were so many things that was sort of right in our head but the more we got into it the more we got feedback from the community the more we worked with Anvil the more we realized that we really need to substantially rework it um, so in terms of where we are I mean um, I've got a beta offer in my hand mm-hmm. this week uh, I literally got the first one uh, that I'll be looking at today then we'll run a QA process I think for a couple of weeks to make damn sure that it's something which is frictionless and we test every edge case and then after that, we'll run the claim because this is going to be something okay. we have to get right. So if we can we say if the beta testing goes as to plan, we can probably look at something at the end of the month or beginning of next month in terms of... Yeah, I mean, look, if it's, if it's any later than that, I'll be really disappointed. But like um, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm hoping a few weeks from now okay, to get excellent. started. Okay, good to know. Okay, cool. Uh, the next one is, what will the claim event look like? Is it first come, first serve? Or a more organized system such as plot rarity, plot size? And also, will NFT stay the same or do the users get new NFTs that include coordinates? Okay, there's lots of questions. Oh, yeah, it's a multi-part question. It's a multi-part <laughs> question, okay, yeah. Don't confuse me too many. Okay, so the first thing is that what we had in our heads of the way we were going to do it is actually very different to the way we're going to be implementing it. And we are always going to piss people off because everyone has got different ideas on how they want it done. So we know no matter what we do, our experience has shown us that no matter what we do, someone somewhere is going to be unhappy. You can't please all of the people all of the time. Mm-hmm. So after going around in a lot of circles, talking to a lot of people in the community, the way that we're going to be doing it is we're going to be doing it as a multi-stage event mm-hmm. And we're going to do it based upon the rarity of the plot, okay. not the sizes. Okay. And it's going to be one at a time. Mm-hmm. And that's how we've locked it in now. We've done a lot of iterations. Now we're doing the visuals, the graphics, everything around it, and also making sure the user journey works. And so mm-hmm. we're, we're creating like a two-tier experience, one half of which has been created by our team and the other half by the Anvil team. And that together should create Something which the users will be happy with, though undoubtedly people are going to be saying, you know, we want to reserve four or five at a time, or we want to do this, or you shouldn't have done a rarity. But this, we feel, is the fairest approach. And we're keeping the user's interest in mind. Obviously. Yes, you know, yeah. We, we yeah. Have, all of this has got to be yeah. in terms of keeping the user's interest in mind. And, and we are always, we've really gone back and, con- and gone back to the community, you know, what should the deeds look like? What should... Um, what what would the content on the deeds be? How are we going to have a process which is fair? And we've gone with what we think the majority are going to be happy with, but also a lot of internal discussions. And also things like, if you can do multiple at a time, mm-hmm. 
you've got more chances of transaction failures. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more that's going to really get on someone's nerves and they expect to get it, then mm -hmm. the transaction fails and yeah, somebody yeah. else grabs it. So one at a time, clear. Next one, clear. Next one, clear. Lock, reserve, clear. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Actually, um, good segue into the next question. What happens if two users pick the same plot? Who gets the advantage? If two users pick the same plot and they, they both claim we're going to get crucified. So the, whole t so, the, so, the, so the whole point here is to actually try to, when they pick a plot, have a limited amount of time while it's locked in, no one else can select it. But that's why you can only do one at a time, um, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Rather than somebody picking five or 20 and then blocking them all out and stopping everyone doing it, pick one, is locked for five minutes. A bit like a shopping cart. Yeah. So, and after a certain amount of time, if you haven't claimed, it's back on. It's gone. And yeah. then you can go ahead and claim Recon. it. So basically on recent AMA, Ash said that resources will be off-chain. But when can users expect the resource integration? And when do you expect the first crafting to go live? Okay, so our focus on this on, um, on the land is more about the spaces to start with so what we want to do is af after the claim event you're going to have a crib event where you're going to get your free mm -hmm. um, um, you, you know your free spaces mm -hmm. and these are going to be your small your mediums or your large and so our dev focus is more about making sure that that experience and those spaces go live at the same time. So it won't be you get a crib and, yeah, you know what, at some point in the future mm -hmm. it'll have some functionality. No, you'll have your place mm -hmm. and straight away you'll be able to take it, you'll be able to theme it, you'll be able to put different furniture in it, you'll be able to put your NFTs in it, you'll be able to have your chat, you, you know, all of those things you'll have. Mm -hmm. And that's where the dev focus is. Um, the crafting and the resources part is more on the uh, website side. Mm -hmm. And what we have done is over the last year, we've actually developed a brand new virtual site, um, which is great. It's got so many features on it, but we deliberately parked it mm -hmm. so that we could get this done and then we can incorporate all the resource crafting into that. And so what we will do is that even after the point you have the crib event, your resources will accrue. Got it. So it won't be a case of you've done the crib event and, oh, we can't even start doing anything with resources up until whenever you launch mm -hmm. it. After the crib event, the resources will start accruing on a monthly basis because you have it, you've got your land and everything else. Um, we may even do it after the claim event. That's something we're, we're discussing. But the whole point here is at the point you have the land and the right coordinates of the land, we should start giving you the resources and then that will go into the claims portal and you'll be able to then start doing that. And what we're going to do is leverage the new website stack mm -hmm. to do that because the new website has got all sorts of small microtransactions. It's got the way you can group things together. The, all of that stuff is done really well. Yeah. So we want to put that functionality into the website. And, you know, I'd like it by the end of uh, Q4, but realistically, I think you're still going to see crafting in Q1, I think. You know, you mentioned uh, you mentioned spaces, right? There's a question about spaces over here. How can a player get into someone's V space, house, or a condo? Now, can he be invited, or can they just walk in? <laughs> well, we're not a fan of home invasions because you don't want that in the real world either, right? Uh, so, 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 so basically, we're introducing a system uh, when it comes to the multi-user, when it comes to visiting spaces, very much like a friends list. It's the equivalent of having a friend who can have a key that can, you know, okay. you're, you're giving mm -hmm. a key to someone that they can come in and come in anytime they want. But the other one might be a limited use key. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you provide an invite and somebody can come at one time mm -hmm. into your place. And then in the future, we'll have things like, you know, we'll have scheduled events. So if you've yeah. got a party, someone can only come to, to your house for the party. Or not. a watch party, wherever you can only come at that time. Okay. So, but, but really, you have to control that entry because it's just like, you know, in the, currently in the metaverse, anyone can just roll up into your house or just yeah. walk into your thing. You, it's not like that. This is your space. You decide what is public or private. Mm -hmm. And you decide whether people can in, come in, yeah. how they can use it, what access they're going to have. I mean, there's even things like, you know, if they come into your place... Let's say they pick up something and have a look at it. When You, you don't want them to rearrange your furniture. They mm. don't want to do that. So you're going to restrict what they can do when you're mm -hmm. in your space as well. The other question, Jay, is that, so you mentioned a friend coming to your space, right? We give them access. Now, can that friend um, make an offer uh, on an NFT that they see on, let's say, MySpace? 
or do they have to go and get it on the JPEG store, for example? Well, they can do it on virtual, or they mm-hmm. can do it on JPEG store. But like you know, ultimately, your house isn't a shop. Yeah. Right. So there's a chat feature in there. They can come and go. Hey, look, that's cool. I like that. Is it for sale? You know, mm-hmm. do you want to do it? And there's a place to go and buy and sell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like when you go around your house, you don't turn over the furniture and start looking stuff and <laughs> going, right now. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay, oh, how much? Oh, okay, I'm going to make an offer for this. No, no, we want, we want to create a much more interesting experience. And so maybe later on, you know, if the community wants something like that, we can add it, but we can see that more for your curated. If, for example, let's say you've got a gallery, mm-hmm. right? Let's say we introduce a crib type, which is going to be a gallery crib type, where you can lay out 20 paintings. You might want that. Mm-hmm. Let's say you want a store mm-hmm. where people can come in and see stuff and buy it. Yeah. I like that. Do they want to come yeah. into your house? No. Mm. It's a question about the map here. Now, will the map, can the map identify zones? In the map, can users know where the most traffic will be? How will they, how will they know that? I, I'm guessing this is a basically <coughs> claiming land. They want to be in thick of traffic. That's a really non-metaverse question. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're here in Dubai. No, it's, it's, a, it's a basically, look... It's a metaverse. You need. It's. We have this conversation a lot of times. It's like, why would you want to spend time driving somewhere to for function mm-hmm. when you can teleport? So we're very much w- working on internal spaces where you can teleport from space to space to space. That's where we're starting. We've always said outside spaces come later. Mm-hmm. That's because most of the functional metaverse is going to focus on experiences and gameplay and everything else inside with ability to teleport between them mm-hmm. or get there really quickly why introduce the tedium of the real world mm-hmm. well, you know you have a metaverse you want to sit in a traffic jam no do, do you think though that this user is probably asking where the most traffic will be in terms of where the population would be in terms of experience let's say shopping zone, the whatever. hub yeah. the, the, the virtual hub right the, that main hub of the island is where everyone is going to want to be you know, and that's going to be the central space with your brand experiences, with your gameplay experiences, where everyone's going to hang out. And then you'll have all of the houses and condos and villas and everything else around that. But then over time, you're going to find brand hubs appearing as well. Mm-hmm. And so brands will have their own custom experiences. And that might eventually overspill into users creating their own brand hubs. But right now, it's going to be like the virtual right. hub and brand hubs. And that's where you expect the density of people. And in terms of traffic, you know, drive around or fly around on your 195 squadron jet mm. but it'll be for fun yeah. it won't be for utility you won't yeah. be just doing that you'll be using the plane or the cars to get there if you want to have some fun along the way but not because not for yeah. less Makes utilitarian more yeah. fun another one is Cardano Island a decentralized metaverse that cannot be turned off or is everything organized on central servers how do you foresee this evolving in the future well Right now, there's nothing with actual lot of business intelligence which is actually properly decentralized. There's no such thing. Let's look at you know a, a sophisticated 3D model. Right now, let's say that that model is sitting in IPFS. It's basically a stack of images and rigs and all the components that make them up. You still need something which pulls them together and renders them. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't exist on chain. So there's tons of tech that doesn't exist on chain yet. Mm-hmm. And so I think the future of the world right now is going to be a hybrid of of web of decentralized systems wherever possible with a layer of centralized systems as well. Mm-hmm. And over time that will change. I mean, if you look at a lot of the stuff that Google, Microsoft, all these centralized services have, they're now sort of like decentralized analogs appearing, but a lot of them are clunky, mm-hmm. a lot of them are laggy, a lot of them are slow. I mean, you can't really hold proper data on your chain or business intelligence on chain it's just more like a book a ledger so so, there's so much that needs to be done before Mm -hmm. anything can be decentralized you know there's lots of people making really innovative innovative tech in the future it will be persistent and it will be decentralized and it won't be owned by anyone and if you actually host a shard of the infrastructure you'll end up getting paid Mm-hmm. And so it'll all be in the hands of people, mm-hmm. but in no way, or shape, or form is it there yet. Will users be able to rent their land condos? And how about cars, jets, or the Summit NFTs? Yeah, I mean, look, you have to. I mean, I've, I've mentioned this company a few times called Ember. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a new company that's working. With, with, they've already been introduced to uh, Josh, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what, what they have is 
they've got a really cool frictionless way to do rental. Mm -hmm. And they've already like launched some bits in a couple of metaverses, but they're bringing their tech exclusively to Cardano and mm -hmm. um, you know, they're bringing it to us first. And we're going to pioneer it and we're going to allow all sorts of rental options oh, to happen fantastic. in our metaverse, yeah. Excellent. It's great. It's a great yeah, tech yeah. stack with very little friction. And the biggest problem with these rentals is they're really, really got tons of friction in them. You're going to yeah. need to make it super easy to rent stuff out. Okay, last question regarding security. So cybersecurity has been one of the biggest talks recently with many bridges being hacked. How will virtual secure the metaverse um, and that the assets are safe? You know what? I mean, at the end of the day, the the way to secure assets is put them in a cold wallet and t and disconnect the internet. Mm. That's that's that's, that, the best that, way. that's the best way. <laughs> that's how you should secure them. Um, the thing about all of these technologies is like I spoke earlier about bleeding edge and uh, bleeding edge and leading edge. Yeah, it's like we have got good security, but really the thing about it is that if you look at the components of what make things up at the moment it's like some are going to be centralized some are going to be decentralized ownership ultimately of assets is going to be down to the user it's going to be about having them on cold wallets having being able to use them but the assets will be fundamentally safe mm -hmm. because they are on chain mm -hmm. okay and the biggest risks and vulnerability that you'll find are going to be more related to phishing Mm -hmm. and people losing losing access to their own but, wallets. But basically, from the user's side... Um, yeah, it's, you've got to follow I mean, best yeah, practice. Yeah. Look, um, we're following standards, conventions. Yeah. We're using standardized contracts. We're using uh, proven technologies mm -hmm. um, for our Web2 stuff. You know, like, you know, you can't run everything off uh, IPFS all the time. You need to mirror it and put it on a fast database where your latency will eat you alive. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of stuff is very, very mature. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Um, Web2 technologies, uh, security is very, very mature. But the thing about crypto is that people are finding new ways all the time oh, yeah. to get into it. And like, you know, hackers used to, you know, do for almost for fun, find way vulnerabilities in the system. But with crypto, it's pretty much all money. Yeah. You know, these are real assets. This, this is people's tokens. These are digital, digital assets that are value. So now hacking has taken on a whole new uh, shape mm -hmm. because people know that they can make a lot of money. And you, every day yeah. you see... Um, every day you see problems. I mean, someone we know really well that works, um, publishes something on our platform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the poor lady clicked a link and yeah. it went into OpenSea and it, they completely took every asset she had. And every a, lot of, she had. a lot of onus on the, the consumer, the end customer to be... You you got to really be paranoid and, yeah. uh, and and don't be lazy. Don't put stuff yeah. into hot water. It's just put it into cold storage wherever you can. Don't use public Wi-Fi. There's a ton of stuff you shouldn't yeah. do. Don't talk to purveyors. Don't give them your wallet address. <laughs> right? That's a good ending. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to purveyors. <laughs> so yeah. Don't um, trust him. We're going to do this um, every week. Yes. We're going to do Q&As, take questions from um, our, our people in on social. If you have any... I want a phone in. Huh? Let, let's have a phone in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we should. Well, well, it probably makes sense to have this and have a Discord running commentary yeah, so we can yeah, answer exactly. questions. But like, we're going for much more for a studio format this time around. It's just like, yeah. why not? Yeah, it's just nice. like, um, and let's introduce people to different members of the team. Yeah. They get to see the same people over and over. Yeah. So uh, let's just do that. Very one. nice. Well, thank you, everyone. Till later, then. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, Boris.